Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're exploring something pretty incredible, how our very genes, our DNA, can tell stories about our collective past. I mean, have you ever thought, what if your genes could link you back to ancient empires? Or maybe, you know, diverse cultures, even figures from legends? Well, today, our deep dive zooms in on North Macedonia. It's a small nation right there in the Balkans where history feels really compressed, cultures clashed, borders shifted constantly, and its gene pool, well, scientists say it's one of the most layered and honestly most debated in the whole Balkan region. It holds clues about continuity, resilience, but it's also a real flashpoint for identity politics. Yeah, it's a fascinating case study. What's really insightful, I think, is how looking in the genetics here challenges our usual ideas about what makes a nation you know, national identity. Like, can a nation that's been shaped by thousands of years of people moving in and out, can it really have an ancient genetic core? That's a great question. And North Macedonia's DNA, well, it suggests the answer might actually be yes. Mm -hmm. And that that's where things get really interesting and maybe a bit complicated. So our mission today really is to dig into the facts, the insights from different studies, different research that shed light on this genetic identity in North Macedonia. We'll look at what the geneticists have found, you know, the hard data, yeah. but also what historians point out and what all this means for how people see themselves, their identity. OK, let's unpack that. Historians seem pretty clear. North Macedonia is this um, crossroads genetically, culturally. Mm -hmm. It's where Eastern Europe, the Mediterranean, even the Middle East have all sort of met and mixed. Absolutely. I mean, think about the sheer depth of history just in that one region over, say, the last 3,000 years. It's staggering. You had ancient Paeonians, Thracians. These are names maybe not everyone knows, but oh. they were there long before the Romans even showed up. Right. Then, of course, huge periods under Roman and Byzantine rule that left a massive mark. After that, you get these really significant Slavic migrations, mostly around the 6th and 7th centuries, that fundamentally change the demographic picture. You can almost picture it, families living there for generations, suddenly having completely new neighbors, new languages. Exactly. And over generations, new uh, genetic blends forming. Mm -hmm. Then later, the Ottoman conquest, another major layer. And that's not even touching on the more recent stuff. The Balkan Wars being part of Yugoslavia. And then finally, independence. It's layer upon layer. So with this incredibly rich, maybe messy tapestry of history, how do scientists even start to figure out what it means genetically? It sounds like a real jumble. It is a jumble, but a jumble with patterns. They use some powerful tools. Recent genome-wide studies, these look at, well, pretty much your entire genetic code and also mitochondrial DNA analysis that traces the maternal line way back. Mm -hmm. And what these studies are showing is that people from North Macedonia generally have a genetic profile that reflects... Uh, deep Indo-European roots, so ancient connections, but also significant Slavic input, and this underlying continuity with other southern Balkan populations. Let me give you some specifics. Over half, more than 50% of Macedonian men belong to just three main Y-DNA haplogroups. Think of these like um, ancient clan signatures passed down the male line. Right, like genetic family names almost. Kind of, yeah. They are E1B1B, R1A, and I2A. Now, this specific combination, you find it across the Balkans and into Eastern Europe. It hints at, well, an older local population mixing with those later Slavic arrivals. And then yeah. if you look at the mitochondrial DNA, the female line, you see haplogroups groups like U5 and H quite frequently. And these show strong links, real continuity back to the Neolithic and Bronze Age people who lived in the Balkans thousands of years ago. Wow. So continuity going way back. Exactly. But here's uh, maybe the bombshell finding. A big comparative study in 2017, it found that modern North Macedonians genetically clustered closer to Bulgarians and Serbians than they do to Greeks or Albanians. Oh, I can see how that would stir things up. Oh, absolutely. It yeah. directly challenges some very deeply held national stories in the region, right? It forces people to rethink historical connections. And yeah, it sparks some very heated debate. So boiling it down, the science paints this picture of a really layered genetic identity. You've got these deep Balkan roots, thousands of years old, but then clearly overlaid with major Slavic contributions. It really is like looking at a slice through time recorded in DNA. That's a good way to put it. But, and this is a big but, isn't it? This is where this fascinating science runs smack into something much more uh, volatile. These fierce identity battles, ethnic national that have defined the Balkans for so long. Precisely. And it raises that thorny question, whose DNA tells the truth? Or maybe what truth is it telling? The core controversies are pretty well known. There's the whole legacy of Alexander the Great, our modern Macedonians, his descendants. That's a huge one. Always comes up. Always. 
Then there's the long, long dispute with Greece over the name Macedonia, Greece arguing it's exclusively part of Hellenic Greek heritage. That led to the country officially becoming North Macedonia in 2019, as you know. A major compromise. A major and difficult compromise. And then you also have tensions with Bulgaria, with some Bulgarian perspectives claiming Macedonians are essentially Bulgarian, culturally and genetically. So how does the genetic evidence actually get used or maybe misused in these debates? Well, you see some Macedonian nationals, for instance, pointing to certain ancient DNA studies, studies that link Bronze Age skeletons found in the region to modern Macedonians. And they present this as sort of proof of continuous indigenous presence stretching way back before the Slavs arrived. Okay, I see. Using the science to back up a specific narrative. Right. But then critics, other scientists, historians, they push back hard. How so? They argue that, well, first it oversimplifies the science. Genetics shows populations mixing and shifting, not neat lines of descent. And second, it blurs that crucial line between population genetics, which is about groups and probabilities, and constructing a political story about national origins. It sounds like geneticists working on this region are walking a real tightrope, trying to present objective findings in an environment that's just politically supercharged. That's exactly it. The Macedonian gene pool, you could say, is as much a political battleground as it is a biological reality. It's complex territory. So we've established how genetics can illuminate history, but also how it can get tangled up in these really intense identity politics. But the story doesn't stop there, does it? This diverse gene pool in North Macedonia, it turns out, has really practical implications too, especially for health. Yes, and this is another fascinating angle. Geneticists aren't just looking at the past. They're using this rich genetic data to understand population health today. For example, they found a higher than average prevalence of thalassemia traits in certain ethnic groups there. Thalassemia is a type of genetic blood disorder. Okay. Why would that be more common? Well, the leading theory is that it might be an ancient adaptation. Carrying the trait could have offered some protection against malaria, which was historically common in parts of the Balkans. It's a kind of evolutionary trade-off. Interesting. Like sickle cell trait in other regions. I'm exactly like that, yes. Yeah. Another area is pharmacogenomics, how your genes affect your response to drugs. Studies in North Macedonia have observed distinct differences. For instance, between Macedonian Slavs and ethnic Albanians in how their bodies process certain common medications, like the blood thinner warfarin, or beta blockers used for heart conditions. Meaning a standard dose might work differently or cause more side effects depending on your genetic background within the country. Potentially, yes. It highlights why understanding this local genetic diversity is important for medicine. Really, North Macedonia's diverse gene pool makes it a valuable sort of um, natural laboratory for studying how genes and environment interact to influence health outcomes, not just there, but potentially across Europe. So it's not just about history claims. It has real-world applications. Yeah, it adds a whole other dimension to it. It does. And if we sort of zoom back out, try to connect all these threads, mm -hmm. what makes the North Macedonian gene pool so special, so worthy of a deep dive like this, is because it really is a microcosm, a reflection of the entire Balkan region, and maybe even Europe in miniature. You see the echoes of ancient genetic roots going way back to Neolithic farmers, Bronze Age warriors. Then you see the clear overlays from later arrivals, Slavs, Ottomans, other Mediterranean groups. And woven through it all, you see this very human story, the struggle to define who you are, your identity, especially when you're caught between big historical forces and, frankly, great power politics. So for you listening, what does all this mean? Well, maybe it means thinking about ancestry in a more complex way. This isn't just abstract DNA data. It feels more like a living history book, a history book that kind of forces us to reconsider where people really come from and how modern borders. Well, they often don't neatly map onto these much older, deeper genetic connections. Exactly. It challenges us to see history not just in text, but etched right into our cells. So as we wrap up this deep dive, it seems pretty clear that North Macedonia's gene pool mirrors the Balkans itself. It's complex, it's overlapping, sometimes it seems contradictory, but it's undeniably rich with history. Which leaves us with a pretty profound question, I think, for any nation really, but especially here. Can DNA truly define a national identity? Or perhaps, should its main role be to remind us of just how interconnected we all are, of our shared tangled roots? Should we be using genetics primarily to draw lines between groups or to find the connections? That's definitely something to ponder. We encourage you to think about those questions. Remember, every gene tells a story, often many stories, but it always takes us people to listen, to interpret, and to decide what those stories mean for us today.